Welcome back to the garage this week, you guys. Uh, we're going to depart just a little bit in terms of making bows. And uh, when you get into the habit of doing a lot of that kind of work, uh, it does not hurt to also involve yourself in the habit of making arrows. Uh, so today, we're going to just run through a real quick tutorial on how to take this and turn it into this. All right, so hang out with me for a minute. I will show you quickly how to get some arrow shafts put together in a hurry. Okay, guys, what I have here is a piece of rough cut uh, cedar dimensional lumber. It's a uh, rough cut like two by four, basically, but it's not, it is not like two by four, like what you ex would expect to find on a stud. So this is a uh, fencing material, essentially, like cross beam fencing material. Uh, and you'll notice that the grain on this particular piece is really pretty straight. And I'm, I'm shooting for the straightest possible grain I can get uh, end to end, almost as if we were making a bow out of it. And the intent here is to, uh, you know, get something that's going to run all the way along the shaft of our arrow uh, from end to end, which makes it real sturdy. Uh, any cross grain, of course, is going to uh, behave the same in an arrow as it would with a bow and it just break. So I purchased this piece of lumber for $16 over at the Home Depot. All right, so we've got $16 invested in this particular project. Now, one other thing that you have got to make sure that you do is get a board that has really, really tight growth rings. And I don't know if you can see this, but these growth rings are so tight out in here as to almost be imperceivable. Those growth rings are so tight. And that's what lends uh, a soft wood like a, or any kind of juniper or cedar or something like that, it's strength. You have to have very tight grained uh, wood. Uh, otherwise you're just dealing with uh, weak, weak material. All right guys, here is our setup. We have two pieces here that are each 31 inches long. So we should get uh, good length shafts out of these guys. Here is the waste material over here. So uh, that is what we are not going to be able to use. Um, pretty good uh, turnout. I mean, if you figure for the cost of uh, $16 and we're going to get a real fair number of uh, shafts out of these two lengths right here. Uh, very cost effective. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get these cut up. I've got my table saw set up here with just just a whisper of over three-eighths of an inch uh, width on the fence here on my table saw. And I'm going to rip off some uh, three-eighths inch, just barely larger than... Uh, lengths of wood that we are going to turn into our arrow shafts. And then I went through and separated out the shafts that I do have. And I have 17, what I would consider to be premium, premium grade right here. Now that's, when I say premium, we're talking grain that runs relatively, relatively straight end to end on these right here. So these, these are... These are pretty good in terms of uh, straight running grain. These are what I would call marginal right here as far as that grain configuration. And you can even see some of them are just spiraled in there. 
so this, these, I mean, we could venture to try and make arrows out of those, these particular shafts, but this is not going to uh, yield us the most uh, dependable outcome. What we have are uh, 3 8 by 3 8 square lengths, and we are going to run them through our jig here. And my jig is not very fancy. And as a matter of fact, it's far from fancy. There's nothing exciting about it. It's just a piece of half inch uh, plywood that I sent through my uh, table saw here. The blade was set at a 45 degree angle and I just cut out, you know, 45 degree cuts in there. Just enough to set a shaft down in like this and put the corner up top and we can then shave down that corner. So what we're going to do is in this jig right here, we're going to take our four corners off of this particular length of wood, which will give it then eight surfaces. And then we'll position it in here so, such that we can take down the resulting uh, eight corners and turn that into what would be 32 and so on. And so I'm going to show you how that looks. As you'll see, I put a kerf in at 32 inches, or take that back at 29, 30, 31, and 32. That's kerf. And what I do with that kerf is put a stop just a piece of wood in here as a stop so that we can put our shaft in there and it will not it will not push beyond this end. I don't know if you can see that really. Yeah. So it'll stop up against that and then we can work our um, planer then against that that edge without it running away. All right guys, so <clears throat> I have my jig set up here. Got one of my square dowels, for lack of a better way of describing it, ready to go. And I'll just set up my jig and I've got just a real small planer here. We're just gonna take these corners off a little bit at a time. Uh, I've kind of worked it out such that it takes about uh, five five strokes, and if you if you find that you're running into a little bit of issue running it down that length, it might be that the grain's just enough in the wrong direction that turning it around might be the trick to get a smooth run down the length of that shaft. All right, so here we go. And done five runs on this one edge. We're going to turn it. I'm going to take the next edge. Here. All right, so hopefully you can see there. We've now got an octagon going. All right, so from there, get on here. And what we want to do is just take down any corner, any cornered edge, and just ease it off. So it should be really small. Uh, ribbons that come off on those edges. If you start taking off something too thick, then you're, you're running a flat spot. And we do not want any flat spots. We want to only only take off these corners rough state and you might be able to see the flashing of the light on that so you can see some of those flat surfaces but ultimately we're dealing with a pretty much round round edge probably take a little bit off of here okay guys so i got a few shafts here that are run through the jig here and, and just pretty much angularly round 
right? So reduced it to, or reduced them to octagon shape and then took off all of the corners that, that uh, I could. And they're for all intents and purposes round, uh, but you can tell they've got some flat edges to them. Not like these here that roll freely. So these two have already been sanded out. But we're gonna go through the process of sanding these now. Uh, and no real big mystery here. You go ahead and like chuck one end of this shaft into the chuck of a drill. And not super tight, guys, because this is cedar, so it's going to be, it's going to crush in there if you just keep tightening down. You want to tighten it just enough to get a bite and call it good. And we can, we can spin it like this. And I've got 50 grit paper here, garnet paper, that I'm just going to run... And the idea here is to just knock off those edges. All right, guys, I'll show you one more quick way to, to reduce your shafts pretty quick uh, with belt sander. Uh, not required to have that thing running. And as a matter of fact, it's probably better to control if it's not, because uh, you can actually rest your hand on here without fear of the belt grinding it up. But uh, if you spin this right there on the flat surface. It will take that shaft down pretty quickly. All right, so there you go. Nice round shaft right there. And then we'll go back and by hand, we'll take it down uh, with that 50 grit in the hand so that we can uh, do a much, much lighter, lighter touch and get a nice smooth finish to that because when you run it on that belt sander, it's a pretty rough, it's a pretty rough finish. All right guys, so here's basically our finished product right here. Um, everything's been sanded down to actually 120 grit uh, sandpaper and I would tell you like these little drywall sanding pieces or paint sanding pieces that have like the, the kind of mesh paper so that the sawdust can fall through it. This is probably the best stuff uh, to use as you start coming into uh, your finished dimensions on these, uh, on your arrows here. Uh, I went ahead and spined them out and I'm spining anywhere from like 30 pounds of spine to as much as 40 pounds of spine here, and I got them laid out kind of in order. So three at 30, two at 35, and two at 40. Um, weighed them out also uh, for the weight of the shaft itself, and came in anywhere from my lightest shaft here at 276 grains to my heaviest in here somewhere, this one right here, at 318 grains. So... We're like within 40 grains of one another on the shaft size, within 10, 10 pounds of spine on the, on the others. And so as you start manipulating your spine and the weight of the arrow, uh, you can, you know, shorten the shafts of the, the heavier spined arrows so that they're, or take that back, shorten the shaft of like your lighter spined arrows so that they're a little bit stiffer going through the, the handle of your bow and leave the 40 pound or the heavier ones full length. Uh, you can also adjust the amount of deflection based on the weight of the uh, tip that you put on this arrow. So I'm, I'm choosing to do shell casings that are blunt here. And uh, I, I just have a backstop that I shoot against, so I just shoot at targets uh, in front of the backstop when I'm shooting a lightweight bow. So these are perfect for my a uh, 30 pound bow, which is what I was making it for, making this batch for. Uh, but if you want to have a lightweight tip, right? So this is the, the 38 caliber uh, shell casing right here is 66 grains. My nine millimeter casing is uh, 60 grains even. And then if you want to have something that's gonna penetrate, say a bale or some target or something, you could uh, grind the uh, end of your casing down. Now you gotta be careful 
and check to see what kind of depth you have on that casing to know how much you can cut. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that or how much, how much room your, uh, your taper can occupy there to make something uh, of a penetrative point. And that cost me 10 grains. So this particular tip is 50. So I got a 50 grain tip here, 60, 66. And obviously the heavier tip is going to deflect your shaft a little bit more. So you might go with a heavier tip on, on a heavier spined arrow to help it flex through and try and match it to the weight of the shaft. And there's where you can get into all the different kind of combinations of how you're going to manage your matched set of arrows and, and get them to shoot at an optimal, uh, in an optimal fashion out of your bust. And from here, of course, you just taper your ends, put on the knock of, of your choice, be it a self knock, plastic knock, whatever you want, and the tip of your choice as well. Um, taper that or go with shell casings if that's what you want to do. But for me, when I'm shooting lightweight arrows out of a lightweight bow, I want the total mass of that arrow to be uh, as light as possible and still effective downrange. So uh, these are going to finish out under 400 grains tip arrow and everything and in a lot of instances i think even under 350 grains so uh, that that will help scoop those arrows uh in an efficient manner out of a light bow all right so any questions drop them down in the comments i'd be happy to answer uh i mean see too what what happens with the pine shafts I'm, I'm sorry i didn't get to that part in this in this build but the process remains the same when you find the material that gives you the results that you need then you're, then you're well on your way to uh, being able to have your own sustainable supply of arrows. So uh, thanks for watching. Guys, I will uh, check in with you again next week.